Hey everyone, it's Lindsay and Rick and we're here to talk to you about week two of our nutrition challenge. But first, let's do a quick recap of week one. In week one, we asked you to weigh and measure your food, log it, and read your food labels. And that was both the nutrition facts and the ingredients. And today we did post some reflective questions in the Facebook group. And so if you haven't yet, please go ahead and take a look at those questions and answer them. And that's just so that you can reflect on what you did well and what you can do to improve next week. And don't forget that all of week one carries over to week two. So let's talk about week two. This week we're asked, we're going to talk about sugar and we're going to ask you to identify two, two food items that you eat on a regular basis that contain sugar and, elim and eliminate them. Um, so yeah, what are, you, what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean by sugar? Like, can you define that? Yeah, sugar. We're talking about white table sugar, brown sugar, uh, honey, ma uh, high fructose corn syrup, maple syrup, molasses, Okay. Um, you know, I once read that there were 80 different words that scientists, you know, and food companies had come up with to identify sugar. So a lot of times when you're reading your food labels and the ingredient list, sugar, even if it isn't outright called sugar, if there's a word that ends in O-S-E, that's typically going to be a different word for sugar. So, um, you know, like dextrose mm -hmm. and stuff like that. What we're not talking about is sugar that naturally occurs in food. So, for example, we're not asking you guys to eliminate fruit. You can still eat your berries and bananas and stuff like that. We're not talking about the trace amounts of sugar found in dairy. We're not talking about the trace amounts of sugar found in, in nuts. Now, I'll read you in this ingredient list. This is just pistachios and sea salt, and there are two grams of sugar, but had this been pistachios, sugar, sea salt, this would definitely be a no-go. Like most trail mixes, like if you get a trail mix in it, sometimes they'll add a little bit of honey and sugar on that, uh, that, that you know, nut that you might eat. Um, and sometimes those trail mixes that seem healthy, they also have some dried fruit in there. And what does dried fruit usually have added in there? Sugar. Yeah. Um, you might read it on the label. If it reads on the label, um, as like just like the nuts and it has sugar in it probably okay but if it has it in the ingredient list it means they added sugar to it okay? mm -hmm. and that's just that's a lot of times what they'll do for these yeah things. so just beware and make sure that you're reading your ingredient list if you want to like if you're like hey I already do that I don't I don't do anything with sugar in it or like I'm 99% away there you can start looking at the sugars in your foods and you can try to start cutting that down but that would be extremely difficult, it would probably eliminate a lot of the vegetables and uh, and some of those nuts out of your diet. So That'd be hard. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so, oh, the other, the other thing that we are including in this challenge yes. that we're counting as sugar are going to be sugar substitutes. And, yeah. and why are we including those? Yeah, sugar substitutes. When we talk about that, we're talking about things that like, like are in diet colas, um, things that are in sugar-free items, things like erythritol, stevia, and aspartame. Those are the big ones that I can think of, right? So you might see erythritol and stevia. Now don't ask why we have that. And well, I'll say this. Generally speaking, these things have zero caloric load, right? So that calorically they're, they're, they don't add anything. And the second thing is they don't have any glycemic load. So your body's not going to have the same insulin response to them. However, I'm saying this because they they do have a psychological dependent factor on them. In other words, you start getting um, used to that taste. They make foods tastier, which means you're more likely to overeat them. So they can override the satiety hormones, the satiety signals. And also they've actually, recent research I think has been shown that Diet Coke paired with, uh, with refined carbohydrate, uh, so the fake sugars with refined carbohydrate could actually lead to more obesity than, than um, just the refined carbohydrate. So that's just a, another big concern I think you should think about is when you combine some foods, it makes them worse. And what about digestive issues with sugar alcohols? Oh yeah, so this stuff right here, the reason why it has zero calories, much like fiber, is in, it just goes right through your body. And so what you get is you get a your body that can't digest this stuff. So if you take too much of this stuff, 
your uh, you'll get the bubble guts, <laughs> and uh, you'll you'll yeah you'll be uncomfortable you'll, for a day or two. Yeah, you'll be uncomfortable for a day or two. Um, some of the if like you see a bag of sugar free candies. Uh, you actually read it, say if you eat too much of this, you might have gastrointestinal stress, and you'll be on the yeah. toilet all day the next day. So yeah. that should be a sign that maybe you shouldn't be eating this yeah. stuff in general, but I know it's hard if you're like, but it's got no sugar, right? <laughs> and then next thing you know, you're, you got BGs. So Rick, why are we talking about sugar? Why do we want to eliminate as much sugar as possible from our diet? All right, so three reasons, really. The main reason is, well, not the main reason. They're all, they're all important, but um, the first reason is, Sugar is non-nutrient dense calories, right? So we, we derive calories from it, we get glucose, and that provides us the currency for energy in our systems. However, it's not nutrient dense. We can get the same amount of glucose and, and glycogen through other carbohydrate sources like fruit and vegetables. So it's not nutrient dense, it's added in there. Another thing is it's a um, there's a health and longevity issue with it because when you consume sugar, it will spike your blood sugar. And then insulin, it responds as well to take that blood sugar, kind of to transport it and store it. And once your body's filled with it, it'll store it as you know glycogen. It'll repair the, it'll replenish the glycogen, which is basically like long-term storage for sugar. Once that's filled, it'll go as fat. But here's another thing: is we're not just talking about like body fat in that in that sense. We're also talking about when insulin gets spiked chronically, it could lead to all sorts of other chronic disease, such as type two diabetes, obesity, um, heart disease and a host of other chronic disease issues, that's through that chronic insulin spike. And there's more that we can talk about in terms of the, the, like the, uh, the drug addict who needs more drugs to, uh, to get the same high. It's the same thing with insulin. Your body starts producing more and you become less sensitive to the insulin. And so but with that elevated insulin, because it's so in your body, it starts creating a cascade of negative chronic effects in your body. Um, the quickest way to gain weight would be to inject insulin in your body mm. and you actually will 100% gain weight. You'll get fat. Okay. <laughs> And I know what I'm saying. This is it's something you should understand. It's like, well, if I'm if if I inject it and it gets me fat, well, if it's chronically elevated, it'll do the same thing. And I, and I say fat, and really, it's a lot of chronic disease as well. Um, so that's the the other reason for longevity and health. You might ask, like, what about the like pre workout, post workout? I'm running a marathon, and I need that glucose for energy. We're not talking about short term performance gains, which there is some benefit there, but we're talking about long term health and longevity. We're talking about the stuff that doesn't improve performance like the sugar in your coffee um you know eating it for breakfast right you start your day off with pancakes and syrup that's what we're talking about that does not improve performance in any by any means we're not talking about like you're running a marathon and you need a little like gel packet that's not what we're saying okay um we could talk about that but that's not the point okay the point is for those daily habits um and then the third thing would be the psychological dependency factor so remember nutrients calories um, there is the longevity health reasons because of insulin and then there's the psychological dependence which we'll really touch on in a moment and that's why sugar alcohols right are yeah. in this we say psychological dependency we're talking about two things one it makes foods really really tasty and you're more likely to overeat tasty foods right it's hyper palatability um, when foods taste really good <laughs> it's really hard to uh, to stop eating them yeah. And you, you chronically want to snack on them. And if you're chronically snacking, insulin spiking. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is the reward system. And, and Lindsay, I want to ask you a couple questions here. Yeah. Uh, when you were a kid and, and you were going to celebrate like a birthday, hmm. what did you have? Cake. Oh, cake. Okay. Maybe cake and ice cream. Oh, man. Oh, wait, 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 wait. it's your birthday and you're at school. What did you bring for people? Cake. Cake. Cupcakes. cupcakes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, you got an A on your report card. What did, you, what did you celebrate with? Cookies and ice cream. Cookies and ice cream. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go the other direction. Let's go, Lindsay. Uh, you, um, it's raining outside and you're, uh, it's raining outside. It's all gloomy and, you know, you're kind of quarantined inside. What do you want to eat? Cookies. Oh. Comfort food, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you, <laughs> if you gotten dumped. Oh. Yeah. Hopefully not by you. Yeah, hopefully not by me. <laughs> what was that? What would you, what would you drown yourself in? A tub of ice cream. A tub of ice cream. <laughs> even though, even though Lindsay can't do the lactose, she'll sit there and just, she probably. I'll do it anyway. Yeah, do it anyway, right? These are comfort foods. These foods are addicting. They, because 
they have sugar in them, so they're addicting. So it's hard to not to stop, right? Your 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 satiety hor um, hormones aren't activated when you're eating these foods. But you might ask, like, there's a small dopamine drip that you get from eating these foods. In other words, there's a reward that you get for eating these foods. These hypercaloric foods, um, your body just will crave them and you get that reward and you need more and more to gain more of that reward system. So like right. shock, the chocolates, the cakes, the, the, the sugary stuff. We can even go uh, further and say that this, this salty foods, you know, um, food scientists have really manufactured foods so that we continue that. But that sugar salt combination. Yeah, but what we're saying is like sometimes you think of like like we're talking about psychological as well. We're not just talking about physiological. Like when you think of like your morning coffee, and you're like, oh, I need my morning coffee, mm. right? And that's just kind of like your it's it's your habit. And so when you throw in your creamer that has sugar in it, or your breakfast on Sundays, your donut uh, once a week, little things like that is what we're talking about. Where you start associating you, your you'll pair like your neurons that fire together wire together. You'll pair things events. Sitting, going to the movie theater, what do we like to have at the movie theater? Well, I like to have chocolate-covered raisins. You love popcorn and a Diet Coke. Yeah, so it's like a, so it's like a bad combination. We don't go to the movies all the time. Um, it's like it's a once-in-a-while thing. But if it was a daily thing, that would be a problem. Okay, yeah. so anyways, so those are the three reasons why. Um, so let's talk about stress. Um, what happens when we're... You know, and before we talk about what happens to our body when we're stressed, let's just take the moment to address the fact that we're all in this very stressful situation that's caused by external factors. You know, we have no control over the coronavirus and, you know, yeah, we are doing our part by staying home, but, you know, there's this constant influx of news and updated information that's not so great that causes us stress and anxiety. So what happens to our body when we're stressed? Oh my goodness. Um, okay, you're absolutely right. And we've been reading your your um, your reflective uh, pieces on the you know on Facebook, and it really made us think about this. So what happens in your body? Your body releases stress hormones, and the stress hormones that we're talking about, like adrenaline, those those um, pair, the sympathetic nervous system will, will spike. Uh, it'll release t um, uh, adrenaline. And cortisol. and cortisol, right? And so when it releases these things, these things will mobilize the sugar in our body so that it can use that as quick energy for fight or flight. So we use this as like our, our thing. We actually get something in the morning. We, we um, have a circadian rhythm. And in the morning, we get the dawn effect, which means cortisol will be elevated. And that kind of gets you up in the morning, wakes you up. And that little bit of blood sugar spikes up and gets you going. Um, little things like that. Short terms, short efforts, cortisol can help with like like formation of memory and learning aspects and everything. So it's, these are really good things in small doses. It's the chronic elevation of this stuff. It's the anxiety that you get uh, all day when you start thinking about, when you start ruminating on, uh, you know, is my job secure? Uh, my routine's gone. I'm, I'm eating bad. Um, I'm, I'm um, am I like you have you play the game? Am I bored or am I hungry? Right? Am I like it's, it's like oh man, I'm hungry. It's like am I hungry or am I just bored? Right? Um, but anyways, what we're seeing is we're seeing this elevated stress. We're seeing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. We 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 read it uh, from everybody. We know that everybody's feeling it. It's not like anybody's special. Uh, so we're looking at diet, especially this week's challenge in regards to sugar, in that. If we can control this element of that insulin spike, it might it might offset or help out the other aspect, the stress aspect, right? And that's kind of where I think it's extremely important to focus on nutrition because if we have that stress spike and then we start eating these bad foods because we're stressed out, right? Um, then our yeah insulin just keeps going up and up and up. You ever seen uh, Austin Powers and he's like, I'm fat because I... Yeah, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. I, <laughs> anyway, I, I eat too much because I'm fat, and I'm fat because I eat too much. Anyway, oh, okay. uh, it, it's a, if you know the quote. Anyways. <laughs> okay, so... We'll, anyway, what we're trying to say is that when you're stressed, not just in this current situation, yeah. but say like other stressful events that occur in life, you know, you're just know that your body is releasing insulin to help, to give you that energy to 
get through that stressful situation. And right now we're in one of those stressful situations. Our insulin is elevated. So to prevent it from spiking even higher, we need to control control it with food. We can control our food. We can't control this external factor. It becomes a controllable. Okay, let's, let's uh, recap. What's this week about? This week is all about sugar. Just as we discussed, we gave you the why. Now it's up to you guys to identify two items that, that you consume on a regular basis and eliminate them. Eliminate them. And don't forget that you're still going to weigh and measure your food, log it, and read your food labels. All right? Anything else? That's it. All right. Well, thank you guys. We'll see you next week. Good luck.